Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Sagitnet2. These parts represent the worst parts I ever put on on the car. I know some of you probably have the same thing. You have to have some parts that was put on on your bin of shame. But some parts I have thrown away, but some of these parts, I don't know, somehow I collected it. Uh, like I've said before, from Hall of Fame to the bin of shame. I'm gonna start with the drive axle. For everyone that have seen my channel, uh, not long ago that I was trying to figure out why I'm feeling or I felt some vibration and it took me a little while to figure out that the culprit is the needle bearings of this tripod bearing. This rank number eight in my book, it's because of some technicalities and also part of a user error. I think uh, what causing the demise of that needle bearing is because of my setup. The car is just, it's just too low. I think if I uh, raise up the car a little bit, it would have been different. That drive axle would not have been configured like, uh, you know, like letter Z. It's just putting too much stress on these ball bearings. And that's causing the, uh, the needle bearing to, uh, to give out. So that's number eight. Put that on the side. Number seven, the alternator relocator. This is the bracket that I put on or try to put on. This bracket never have seen some action. When I was mocking this up, I saw it right away that when I put it on, the belt it's already in an angle so I have decided that no I, I can't run this thing because of I have seen some people complaining about that the uh, alternator belt is being shredded it's because of the angle what causing that angle or the pulley to go in an angle it's because of the mounting holes it's just too big so it never did saw some action but if I did use this, it would have been a headache. I can still use this. All I need is to modify some things. But I chose not to. I ended up making my own. This rank number seven. This is the no-name brand B-series shifter linkage. And it ranked number six. The reason for that is it's just too sloppy. You have seen it on the video that when I selected some gears and when I put it on, move it around, it's almost like I'm on neutral. It's just too much play. And also, uh, I started to uh, missing from fourth to fifth gear. That's what prompted me to go ahead and start investigating why I'm missing fifth gear. And it led me to this one. But everything is all good now. But for a project, <laughs> there are parts you can use or we could buy to fix this. But I chose not to since I have a spare, an OE, and I use that instead. Number five. Engine mounts. Actually, I bought two uh, engine mounts. I bought this one, a no-name brand, and also a 1320. But the uh, 1320 engine mounts was sent overseas. I've done some research on 1320, and since it's going overseas, I said I might as well give them the good one. And I kept the no-name brand. Uh, which is part of the uh, my experiment. I wanna 
find out what's the difference between the two and I have <laughs> a not so good luck using the no-name brand and now we know and also at the same time I said if it's no good since I did my research I have found out that that the 1320 inserts can be used on a no-name brand I knew it in the beginning because uh, like I said I have been doing a lot of research you know checking pictures and they do have they provide some some dimensions some specs on it the sizes and everything and also what I have found out those no-name brand compared to a 1320 the mount holes are different so they do have construction wise there is a difference on all of those so uh, you have seen it this thing really kills me it's just unbearable I mean everything rattles it vibrates inside the steering wheel the shifter I mean just about everything that I have inside that car I can hear it I think the camera could not pick up some of it some of those things but me being inside is just horrible I know some of you guys have some luck using these it all depends on the way you use your car I know some of you guys only you use it for racing on a drug strip and you need all the stiffest mount that you could get but for some guy like me I hardly use my car but when I use the car I want it to be um, not like OE but something tolerable in my taste for some of you guys thinking about like I did here thinking that you could save some money buying the no-name brand because it's so cheap yeah don't, don't please don't just save up the minimum good engine mounts out there for me in my book is 1320 because I, I have experienced it that's if you are on a budget but if you have uh, no problem buying the good one like Hasport innovative by all means number four right here <laughs> you know when I started working on my cars or upgrading the suspension when it's lowered that was on my CD5 Accord my 1995 Accord there's not a whole lot of a, uh, aftermarket parts that you could get back in the day and even if there is one to fix the camber it is worse than what I got here and I gave this a try but I removed this faster than I installed it yeah right after I used this the next day it's gone it's off what's happening is this adds up it adds up a, a height and when you're lowered it's not good it's hitting the shock tower and not only that <laughs> I was uh, wheel hopping on a turn yeah that's why this came off and it rank number four I guess if you're not lowered it'll be okay but I would not use this if I were you and that is made by SPC number three man it's getting interesting as I go man number three is right here this is the worst parts that I put on on my car yeah it's so bad being cheap man <laughs> but I gave it a try that's what good thing about it I gave it a try man <laughs> don't ever use one of these I actually own a transmission that already has a uh, OE LSD which is the M2 B4 
But I was looking for something like an alternatives and I come across on this one. There is actually an original part, exactly the same thing. But the material on those are different than the cheapest one, the copy. So rather than me getting the original parts, I said, you know what? I think it was $45 at the time. I said, I'll give it a try. You know, if it don't work, I can always remove it and everything. So what I did, I got this one, put it on on my F22 transmission, the P2U5 or A5. And I started using it. I've used it for about like maybe a week or so. And only on the street. And F22 doesn't really have that much power in it. It has a good torque in it. But uh, I started some or experiencing something different. Something different after I have put this on. So I felt like it's not working anymore. So what I did, I drained the oil first. And I have found out that the oil is like mud. And when I put it on my finger, I went like this. And it's like, there's some small pieces on there. It's like a powder. So I said, you know what? <laughs> Again, the faster I put this on, the faster I took it off. What's happening is it's grinding this. The material is too soft. Yeah, it's eating this up. Yeah, it, this, the part is actually turning on this. Yeah, the gear is turning on this one. The spring is just, it has enough tension on there, but it's just the material is not good. So I took this out. I guess if you uh, if you have like a D16, you know, something uh, with uh, less horsepower in it, on a Civic or something, uh, you'll be okay. But I would not use this. Yeah, never get one of these, man. From my experience, yeah, this rank number three. It's because of it involves. Tearing apart your transmission and actually <laughs> remove some gears on it in order for this to be put on. Time and money that you have to spend to use this, it's just not worth it. Yeah, don't ever get one of these. This is not good. In my book. <laughs> All right. What will be the, the, the second? I rank number two because it's associated to number one. Right here. If you are thinking about getting one of those expansion joints, do not get the cheapest flex joint out there. The one I'm talking about is if you look at inside of these, it's corrugated. Yeah, they're selling some parts exactly like this, but it doesn't have anything inside. What you see inside is the same thing as this. This is just the webbing. And I have used one of those because it's so cheap. Again, I'm on a budget. You know, what do I know? <laughs> I thought they're all the same. But don't ever get where you could see what's outside is you could see the same thing on the inside. Get one of these, the one that corrugated one. What happened was it slowed me down. It, in, it impedes the power of my motor. I was, uh, I was in Manila with someone else and I kept thinking, so, man, I need more power. I thought it was the turbo that was no good. But it turned out to be the problem is what's inside. Since it doesn't have that corrugated material inside, like a little shield inside, the webbing, well, the one that I was using, it doesn't have that. 
this thing, it was blocking the passage, the exhaust passage. You can believe me or not, but I'll show you a picture of it. But it was, the hole is only about this big. And that is a two and a half inch pipe. Yeah, right there. That's just what it's inside. Somehow it got cut somewhere. And it sent all this material, all this wire, the wire mesh, ended up having a hole like this. And I thought it was the turbo. And this is number two. So if you are thinking about getting one of those expansion joints or flexible joint, try to get the, uh, the one that has a corrugated on it. And it will last. Okay? So that's number two. <laughs> now we're going to number one, man. <laughs> Let's put this away. Number one. Wastegate. Right here. For some of you new beginners, don't ever get a no-name brand wastegate. Use the good one. Save up some money and get the best money you could get. Yeah, you would not regret it. When it comes to booze, listen to some of your friends that's telling you, uh, don't be cheap. There's no such thing as budget <laughs> build out there when it comes to boosting a motor. Because I had two motors that blew up on me. Uh, <laughs> believe me, I know. I have been there. I have done that. This thing failed to open. That's what happened. And let me show you the bonus part. The part that are associated with this is the turbo. <laughs> this is the eBay don't name brand turbo. But let me show you the turbo itself. Right here. That's the damage that it costs. Messed up the turbine. Yeah. Let me show you the good part. Right there. This actually saw a lot of action. I did my uh, first uh, street tuning on this one. Somewhere in Simi Valley. Boy, I will never do that again. <laughs> very, very good turbo. Very responsive. That's a shame. So when this one failed, all that debris on the combustion uh, chamber, it landed here. And that's the reason why this no-name wastegate ranked number one in my book. The worst ever parts I ever put on on my car. It's because of the, the time and money. Imagine I have to do all over again for the third time. But on the third time, I said... Man, it better be a lucky charm. So I went all out. I got all the good parts on the third time. But let me show you some of the parts that was damaged also. Other than the uh, turbo. The F23 block. Nasty, man. And that, my friend, is over boost because the uh, wastegate failed to open. Look at the piston, man. Nasty. I was using a Cerakote. Look at that. It's still on there. That Cerakote is uh, pretty good. If you prep it correctly, it will last. So on the third motor, I got another block. 
get it LA sleeve and never look back got all the uh, correct hardware along with it everything is good yeah always purify the lower block those my friends are some of the parts the top eight worst parts that I ever put on on my car whether I bought it for <laughs> just to save some money or whether I got it just for the reason of experimenting and there it is I bet you some of you have the same collections in your bin a bin of shame just like me here and this is where I end this video thank you all for watching leave a comment care to share your uh, worst parts upgrade on your car it'll be nice to uh, to hear from you guys once again thank you all for watching bye everyone